Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical equation, a nested radical equation. We have the square root of x plus 2 times the square root of x minus 1 equals 3, and we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods, as well as show you a graph at the end. So let's start with the first method. For my first method, I want to do what is usually done, the standard form or the standard method, square both sides. When we square both sides, the outer square root is going to cancel out with the square. And we're going to end up with x plus 2 times the square root of x minus 1 equals 3 squared, which is 9. Now, we want to get rid of all the radicals. That's pretty much how we solve radical equations. And there could be different le levels or layers. In this case, we have two layers. So we kind of have to clear all the radicals or square roots. So let's go ahead and isolate this radical right here by subtracting x from both sides. Okay, so that gives us 2 times the square root of x minus 1 equals 9 minus x. And you probably know the next step, squaring both sides. Let's do it again. And then we end up with the square of a product. How do you square a product? That's something that comes up a lot in algebra and sometimes pre-algebra, depending on how you define it. But when you have something like AB squared, that basically means AB times AB, and that is equivalent to A squared B squared. Obviously, you have to think about this when you're multiplying these two things. We kind of have to use the commutative property and the associative property. So if there's any rings for which this doesn't work, then we can't say this. But with the real numbers, we're good. Okay? Anyways, so that's the rule. And we're going to go ahead and square the 2, 4. It's going to give us 4. And then square root of x minus 1 will be x minus 1 when squared. And on the right-hand side, we have the square of a difference, right? And what does that mean? It just means that a minus b to the second power, which is a squared plus b squared, that's my way of writing it, I usually write the endpoints first, minus 2ab, which is 18x. Let's go ahead and distribute here, 4x minus 4 equals 81, plus x squared minus 18x, and let's put everything on the same side, and we want to use the side where x squared is positive, on the right hand side, if you go ahead and subtract 4x, we already have negative 18x, or some people call this minus 18x, that gives us minus 22x. And then if you bring the negative 4 over here, like add 4 to both sides, you're going to end up with 85. Now, you might be tempted to use the quadratic formula for this equation. This is what it's going to look like. x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times 85, so on and so forth. Well, squaring a, a 2 and a 2 wouldn't be a big deal. A 4 times 85 is obviously 340. That's not too hard either. But then you're going to subtract and try to find the square root. So this method, uh, it's okay. It'll give you the solution, but there's a better way to do it because this quadratic, or we could call that a trinomial, if you just focus on the left hand side, is factorable. How? You have to think about two numbers whose product is 85 and whose sum is negative 22. And those numbers are negative 17 and negative 5. Think about it. Their product is positive 85. Their sum is negative because both numbers are negative. And then, of course, these aren't the roots. The opposites are. But if you really wanted to get into details, you could go ahead and write this as x minus 17 times x minus 5 equals 0. So if a quadratic or a trinomial is factorable, this is how you can factor it. Of course, this is a trinomial with leading coefficient of 1. If it's not 1, then we got to use the x method. Or again, we can use the quadratic formula. If it's factorable, quadratic formula will give you the factors nice and clear. So what do you get from here? Two solutions, right? x minus 17 equals 0 gives us x equals 17. x minus 5 equals 0 gives us x equals 5. Great. Well, one of the things that's not so great about radical equations is you must check your work. Same thing goes with rational equations because you might end up finding an x that makes the denominator 0. Uh-oh, 
this is not, that's not something you should do. You should never divide by zero. That's very dangerous. Zero to the power zero is okay. As you know, it's one. We proved it in a previous video. I know some people still claim it's zero, but I still believe it's one. Anyways, but divided by zero is absolutely a no-no. So what was I talking about? Yes, we're going to plug it in. I lost track. Let's get back to this. So I'm going to replace x with 17, square root of 17 plus 2 times the square root of 17 minus 1. This is 16, square root of 16 is, or I can show all the steps if you want. Uh, some people don't like it, but you know, hey, this is, this should fit. Um, anyways, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, this is 2 times 4 equals 8, 17 plus 8 is 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. Great. Well, not so great because we were supposed to get a 3. What? Are you serious? This is not going to work. So that means x equals 17 is not good. Let's just cross out the whole thing because that's nonsense. You see, this is what happens. And this was for 17, but let's go ahead and check the 5. Hopefully that'll work. Square root of 5 plus 2 times the square root of 5 minus 1. And then this is supposed to equal 3, but let's just simplify this. This is 4, so 5 plus 2 times the square root of 4. So square root of 4 is 2, so it's 5 plus 2 times 2. The square root of 5 plus 4 is 9. That is square root of 9, and that's equal to 3. Yes, finally, we got one of the answers. So, yes, x equals 5 works, and that's the only solution that works. But why did we have to check our work, and why didn't 17 work, even though it kind of popped up as a solution, right? That's what happens with radical equations. We get extraneous solutions because when you square both sides, think about it, you are squaring a negative number and making it positive. So negative 5 does not equal negative 5. I mean, <laughs> negative 5 does not equal negative 5. Great. Okay, sorry. Brain freeze. Negative 5 does not equal 5, but their squares are equal. You see what I'm saying? Their squares are equal, but they're not equal. Okay, anyways, hopefully you get the idea. We must check for extraneous solutions. That's a fancy word for solutions that do not satisfy the original equation, but they just come up as a result of squaring both sides. If you do it several times, obviously, you're probably going to get more extraneous solutions. Okay, so this is the first method. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. And, and then we'll look at something that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Do you remember? Okay, if you don't, that's okay. We'll get to it. Square root of x plus the uh, square root of 2 times the square root of x minus 1. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of hocus pocus. Would you allow me? Uh, it's also called math and magic. And this is how it can be done. I'm going to subtract 1 and add 1. And you might be questioning, like, how, why on earth are you doing this? Because my goal is to get a perfect square, and I got it. Look at that. This is the square root of x plus 1 squared. If I call this t, this will be t squared, wouldn't it? So I get t squared plus 2t plus 1. 2t or not 2t, okay, if you're a tutor, right? So wait a minute, that is a perfect square, great. So we get the square root of t squared plus 2t plus 1, which is the square root of t plus 1 squared, and that should equal plus minus uh, t plus 1. But you have to think about it, you have to be careful, because you must use absolute value. But what is t? You have to back substitute t is the square root of x minus 1, so the square root of x minus 1 plus 1, guess what? That's always going to be positive. I'm not even saying non-negative, positive. So this is equal to square root of x minus 1 plus 1. So what does that mean? Let's get back to where we started. I'm basically saying that this expression, which was the same thing as my expression because I subtracted 1 and added 1, which is basically adding 0, ended up being this. But originally, this was equal to 3. Wow, this equation is so easy to solve. Guess what? No extraneous solutions are going to pop up because they're not. Square both sides. Add 1. You got it. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, and we'll finish up with that. All right, cool. So x equals 5 is the only solution. And ta-da, this is the graph from Desmos, I think, right? Uh, Wolfram Alpha also does a graph, but this time I wanted to use this. Uh, kind of nice. And as you can see, the radical equation, uh, if you reflect it, you're going to get another piece, but we don't have that piece. And even if we did, there would still be a single 
intersection point those the only solution is x equals 5 in the real world are there complex solutions that's a good question that's for you to find out anyways this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye